Over the last five episodes, we have documented the rise of SimCity as well as its first major stumble with SimCity Societies. What Maxis needed, and what the series needed as a whole, was a solid entry, something to pick the game's legacy back up onto its feet. And while that's exactly what Maxis tried to deliver, it was far from what we received. Let's talk about SimCity 2013. It's March 2012. The Greek government is in the midst of its debt crisis, Kony 2012 is about to explode in popularity, and the Encyclopedia Britannica discontinues its print edition. But more significant to you than any of that is you hear the news. A new SimCity game is being produced. And not just that, but it's being developed by Maxis once again. Will Wright left Maxis in 2009 but just the fact that the original makers of SimCity now had the series back in their hands was a sweet enough victory in and of itself. As months go by, and as you hear more and more about the game, it just sounds better and better. An entirely new simulation engine, Glassbox, was designed to not just run the city from high-level statistical calculations, but with individual agent-based dynamics. It wasn't just numbers. They were real people leading real lives. Car jams weren't just calculated to be there and then rendered. Those were actual cars really stuck. How cool. Further than that, you could play with your friends online, build cities together, share resources, and be stronger together. Now that sounds epic. So you tirelessly wait until launch date, and almost exactly a year later, March of 2013, it's released. And it doesn't work. The servers were overloaded and they crashed, making it unplayable for many people for several days while Maxis and EA worked quickly to add more servers. But why do they need to add more servers? Oh wait, the game actually launched with always online DRM, meaning it was impossible to play the game offline. People were disconnecting from the game, it was crashing, people were losing save data, and it even got to the point that Amazon had to temporarily pull its downloadable version from their website from all of the complaints. This didn't stop it from selling crazy high numbers, however. The hype for a new SimCity game created by its original developers was insanely high, and within the first two weeks, it had sold 1.1 million copies, and by July of 2013, it had sold 2 million copies. The critiques didn't stop at the disastrous day one launch, however. Something players had no idea about was just how small the playable area was in comparison to past iterations of SimCity. And that agent-based dynamic that was being touted as the next best thing? Well, it turned out that those agents didn't really live their own lives. The best example of this is with houses, where each sim that lived in the city didn't have a designated house like they did in, say, SimCity societies. They would just go to the first available unoccupied house. Oh, and remember the DRM? The one that Maxis had said would require a significant amount of engineering to make go away? Well, it turns out that editing just one line of code let you play the game offline indefinitely. News like this kept frustrating players more and more. Now, I do want to focus on this DRM issue for just a little bit, and why I do understand why Maxis did what they did, but also why this was so infuriating to customers. DRM is essentially a way for game developers to ensure that people aren't pirating copies of their game, which is much easier to do in the age of the internet, and it doesn't always require people to stay always online, but the most aggressive ones do require that. The server issue can mostly be blamed on EA for their origin service not being able to handle the influx of new players. But the always online DRM itself was an issue for a big reason. In the early 2010s, it wasn't as likely for every computer to be connected to the internet at all times. For adults, maybe. But as a teenager back then, my desktop didn't have internet. 
and I'm sure many others would have been in the same boat as well. I can't guess as to how those proportions apply today, but it seems like laptops have become, by and large, the norm, which means having wireless internet connections are no problem. And always online DRMs are sort of a thing of the past anyways. Back then though, when not everyone was always hooked up to the internet when an internet connection was required, that was a killer. And that's why I never got the game myself. Eventually, they did make the game single player as well as multiplayer, and they patched out bugs that were found, and they released an expansion pack in September of 2013 that added futuristic elements. But the bridges between Maxis and their consumers had already been burned. This struggle over DRMs would continue until January of 2014, when they finally fixed the game to fully handle playing single player. But not before it made hundreds and hundreds of internet articles and even a couple mainstream media headlines as EA was refusing returns to people, forcing many consumers to go to the White House's petitioning site, We the People, which was discontinued in 2017, and call for an industry-wide return policy for video games that rely on remote servers and DRMs to function properly. The release of SimCity, plain and simple, was a disaster, and it effectively ended any remaining goodwill Maxis had over the series that had built the company. But at this point, it's about time I play SimCity. And this one is unique because this is actually the only one I've never played before. So I'll be going into this about as fresh as those who bought it day one. Let's see how it holds up. Alright everyone, welcome to SimCity. Uh, specifically, SimCity Cities of Tomorrow. I have the expansion pack to it. And I've never played this before. So... Uh, it's wanting me to do a short tutorial, it looks like, in the beginning. But yeah, I've never played this before, not even for b-roll footage, just wanted to try this without ever having played it before. So let's see how that goes. Okay, welcome, you are the mayor of Summer Shoals. Previous mayor did a terrible job and was run out of town. They need my help. Hmm. It's, oh god, the motion blur. That is much better. Although, I just saw... I saw something in here. That... Filter. Vintage. Okay, that's kind of cool. I like that a lot. Very nice looking game, I will say. Very detailed. It's a little blurry when you get in. A little meh. But, that's to be expected. Can I get... Platinum. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Let's turn that off. And just play. Sims need you to do things to improve their lives. There's a sim at Town Hall who needs your help. Find Town Hall and click on the speech bubble. Okay. Okay. So we need to fix our highway. Roads and medium density avenue. Okay, so actually there's a pretty nice array of roads that you can choose from. Okay, so I need to build some residential zones. So it looks like, yeah, okay, this, this is very similar to uh, city skylines in that you build right along the road. That's actually a fairly intuitive way of building that, too. It's not as freeform, but... It's nice. It's a way to make nice-looking cities, too. Instead of very blocky kinds that you get with uh, some of the older SimCity games. Okay, so this is the whole thing about uh, making deals with other cities. Okay, so they make the pipes flow underneath the roads. That's actually kind of nice. I will admit, um, it's intuitive and it's just kind of a pain to have to build pipes everywhere. <laughs> That's kind of satisfying. The way that that all, you know, clicks. And not exactly realistic, I imagine. Maybe it is. These, yeah, they're up to no good. Thank <laughs> you. 
They look a little uh Robloxy. <gasps> okay. Done with the tutorial, let's play our own city. Finally. So there's single player and then there's multiplayer. I wanted to play multiplayer, which I don't right now. Maybe some other day. Uh, it's just that easy. That's nice to know. I will also say though, uh, Origin really needs to get their act together because I found out that there's an issue that a lot of people have had for a while now that sometimes the games just don't let you play them. The play button's just grayed out and so you have to uh, you have to do something like a bunch of different things to solve it sometimes you have to solve it with different you know solutions um the one that i opted for is uninstalling and then reinstalling so i've had to reinstall this game two times now so it does not bode well for me doing a longer series of this if i ever wanted to or even just playing it in my free time my assumption here is that I would be able to build these cities and then I'm basically making I'm my own neighbor it's my assumption at least okay so there's a whole bunch of stuff about cities of tomorrow thing that I don't really care about right now I just want to build my city it's these pop-ups really need to go away right now so I actually have a pretty decent amount of options here. Well, you can raise and lower roads. So you can build like little bridges, I guess. I could build square roads. What does that even mean? Oh my god. <laughs> That's not the prettiest looking thing in the world. Alright, let's... That's horrifyingly ugly. Here, let's just... Okay, good enough. Let's get some residential going, I guess. All on the inside. Okay, so... Uh, town hall, provide working water. Okay, I need to do that first. Oh, interesting. There's an aquifer system. I can't say I expected that. Oh, you know what I just realized? When I build this stuff, it shows me the wind direction. I bet, I bet, that if I put houses here, the pollution go would be going directly to the houses. Let's see. How do I find... Oh, all data maps. Wind map, ground pollution, air pollution. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's actually... I'm a fan of that. I'm a very big fan of that. The way that you build cities in this actually does remind me a lot of City Skylines. And I feel kind of bad, you know, comparing it so much to City Skylines. But, you know, I mean... Frankly, that that's what happened. With everyone, you know. There's a reason that the SimCity series died here. Unfortunately, because this is actually... I'm actually having a pretty good time with this. I could see it getting a little, you know, boring. And I could see definitely being disappointed. Because apparently back when this was being worked on there were some expectations of it being like SimCity 2000 I don't know if that was just internally within the development team or something that was actually talked about externally and I also don't know how true it is but apparently it was supposed to be a little more similar to SimCity 2000 and then EA got more involved and kind of forced their hand on a lot of things and you know, supposedly that's how we got to where we are now with this. Don't know how true it is, but it sounds about right, frankly. Oop, there's a fire going on. <laughs> I was not paying attention.
a uh, little I'm not I'm not sure how I feel about the closed now hiring thing cuz I saw that happened with the power station and now that's happening with this so so I can add more garages though Okay I I actually really like that the whole modular building thing it makes it I don't know a little bit more hmm what's the word involved I suppose I don't also don't know how to build my city up more so I guess I guess the happier people get the more dense the city becomes I don't know that doesn't seem like a that doesn't seem like a great way to uh, gauge that but whatever so we could build a great work here uh, this is something that I actually so I was talking before about the size limitations I guess the upside to doing that is I mean you are kind of building multiple cities like it almost has like the SimCity 4 feel with regions except the cities actually really do work together a lot more and you know that's not insignificant that's not something that's you know it's not a bad idea I think it's actually really cool I just it feels to me like they lean too heavily into this aspect and that they didn't let people build the cities as much as focus on like developing and you know fine-tuning cities and working with other people let me build a mining city up here I think, though, that the biggest issue, and I think most people would probably agree with this, the biggest issue that affected SimCity 2013 was the day one server launch and just the, you know, honestly, almost improbably high expectations that people had put on Maxis to deliver. The SimCity 4, the last game that was, you know, that people really think was like a really great game in SimCity. It was created, that came out in 2003. And then SimCity Societies came out in 2008. And it was not what those more mainstream SimCity fans were looking for. And so it flopped. And then another five years later, this came out. And this also was not what mainstream SimCity fans were looking for. And so you had a lot of negative reviews of it. I'm sure that if people had looked looked at it for what it was on its own instead of a part of the series, you know, maybe it would have done better, maybe it would have had a better reputation. But you can't avoid the reputation that your series has. And that's something that does need to be taken into account. I mean, like I've said before a couple times now, I'm having fun. I mean, this is fun. It's very aesthetically pleasing. It's nice to look at. It's It runs well. It's like, I'm sure maybe if there's a lot more going on, that it would start having some difficulty running. But honestly, I mean, SimCity 4 still runs kind of iffy sometimes. So I wouldn't knock it for not running very well. 
I'm impressed. I'm really impressed by SimCity 2013. It really, I did not expect myself to like it this much. It's not my favorite game, for sure, but if I had gotten this when it came out in 2013, I would have enjoyed it. I honestly probably would have enjoyed it more than SimCity Societies. Probably not as much as four or three thousand. Definitely not as much as three thousand. But this is a this is a solid SimCity game, and it's really tragic that this, you know, kind of killed it almost because it really doesn't deserve that reputation. I don't think it deserves the legacy of being the killer of the SimCity series. But it is what it is. The series is gone now, as we know it, unless you count SimCity Build It as a part of the main SimCity series, which I do not. But, you know, it is what it is. And with that, back to the video. SimCity 2013, just like its predecessor, SimCity Societies, was not a terrible game, or even a bad game. Honestly, even though it was a different take on the SimCity genre, it still had a lot of similarities. Enough so that if the game's launch had been managed properly, I might not be talking about the series in the past tense. SimCity 2013 was their chance to reclaim what had been lost. But unfortunately, we look back on it with a sigh of what could have been. The SimCity series was more than just the main SimCity games that made up its backbone, however. In the next episode, I'm going to cover some of the spin-offs that helped to expand the Sim genre as a whole. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed my video and subscribe to my channel with notifications turned on to see more of my content. Leave a comment with your thoughts on this video or topics for the future, and if you're interested, I've also made plenty of other videos, so go check those out too. This has been Historical Hindsight, and I'll be seeing you soon.